Welcome back and in today's video, I'm going to be doing some social commentary about a person named Katie Morton, a licensed online therapist that made some statements most recently that many feel are hypocritical and harmful coming from a professional. If you're unfamiliar with Katie Morton, she has over 800,000 subscribers and just released a video titled 5150 Eugenia Cooney's Story. She's had her fair share of criticisms. You might remember the BetterHelp controversy. Past week or so related to an app called BetterHelp and the connection to YouTubers like Doug Franco, Boogie. It might and be Shane the Donald. biggest scam on YouTube. I want to talk about this BetterHelp situation, which is probably And they definitely should not market themselves as a substitute for therapy and then at the same time say that they aren't one and hidden in their terms of service. Now, at first glance, right, this seems like a positive thing. YouTubers and people on social media opening up about their mental health issues, being more authentic and transparent, and hopefully really destigmatizing mental health issues. Destigmatizing, positive, yay, I'm all for that. But as we dig a little bit deeper and as people started to talk more about these collaborations, they started to rub people the wrong way. Where this starts to get tricky and where people start to have some issues is that many of these YouTubers who talk about better help and are doing some sponsorships with them are reportedly getting up to $200 for every person that signs up for better help with their unique link. So let's say you watched a video and someone's talking about better help and they give a code or a link and you use that and you sign up for the service, that YouTuber is getting up to $200 for that. And so ew, this starts to get a little bit murky because what people are upset about is that it feels like YouTubers are profiting off their viewers' mental health issues. Now, my own personal opinions about this is that therapy is a process. Any online program doesn't properly give respect to this process. And by process, I do mean that y you often have to go through many therapists before you find the right one. Also, another part of the uh, process is that some days are going to be terrible. They're going to be very hurtful, but it's part of the growth. Uh, pain is associated with growth, and without that pain, uh, there is no growth. I kind of believe that it's playing off of, of just people that really don't understand about the process and it doesn't properly educate about that process. That being said, not only did Katie Morton promote BetterHelp, but she's one of the first and founding people to bring it to YouTube. Uh, and her online opinion has been at the best questionable and sometimes harmful. It can be seen uh, in the Shane Dawson series that came out about Jake. Paul. Dr. Todd Grande goes into detail breaking down several important points. I do suggest that you watch that video. It will be in the description below. But I had a lot of requests to answer this particular question. And this question is based on a recent video that was on a YouTube creator's channel. His name was Shane Dawson. And it interviewed another YouTube content creator named Katie Morton. Now, Katie Morton is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And just to be clear from the outset, I don't know either one of these content creators. So the description of sociopathy that was offered as part of this video has offended a number of people and a number of other people have said it's just so technically inaccurate that there needs to be some sort of adjustment, some sort of clarification offered. As I mentioned, I received a number of requests to do this video. And if you look at the impact of this particular video, it's exceedingly popular. So I'm worried about how some of this misinformation is getting out there. And I think it makes some sense to offer a clarification to allow people who are interested to know the scientific facts behind sociopathy. So we already know Katie Morton's involvement with Shane Dawson. So a lot of people were not surprised to see her come out with a video just the other day with Eugenia Cooney. But some of the statements that she made, many people felt were harmful towards mental health. I guess eventually, they decide, like, yep, you have to listen to us. You have to basically go to this place. So I don't know, like, where I'm going. Um, they, like, take me outside, and they put me in, like, restraints. Oh, they strap you. Yeah. yeah. So it was, like, a 5150. Yeah. Which, which we've talked, I've talked about this a little bit in the past. I know many of you have been in situations similar to this, um, whether it's because we were suicidal, self-injury, eating disorder, all sorts of different reasons, feeling really depressed. Um it can be traumatizing. It can be. So then like they put me in like like a stretcher or whatever after mm -hmm. I'm like in the restraints. Yeah. And they I put you- I used to you... work at a hospital, so oh, I've okay. seen people come in. I know like exactly what you're talking about. And... Yeah. 
Yeah, so then it was really crazy. There was one guy there that was like, I guess one of the people that had to like watch me as mm -hmm. I was back there. And he actually seemed really nice. Like he was kind of like, oh, like, you know, I hope it again's okay for you. Cause it sounds to me like you got like screwed over here. Like yeah, it seems... kind of bamboozled a little bit. Yeah. And a lot of us fight hard online to make it okay to talk about mental health. And this not only pushes the stigma, but it pushes a dangerous narrative that 5150s are not okay to do. And really scary. A 5150 is a scary experience, but because it's a life or death situation. Many have been hospitalized and been furious for years, but come to realize those involved were saving their lives. And a lot of people are upset with Katie because they feel Eugenia sincerely needed help, but is yet to accept that. Katie is participating in a dual narrative, being one of the literal reasons Eugenia's 5150 was called in the very first place. This kind of approach from a professional is problematic. I don't think it's lost on anyone that uh, Eugenia Cooney is upset about being 5150. Um, I would imagine that most people that do go through this process are not going to enjoy it. They're not going to like it. They're going to have a lot of negative things to say about it. However, the majority of the time this happens is because those people cannot see what other people see. I guess sometimes it's still kind of hard to see things the way other people do sometimes, at least yeah. like for me it was. And also I guess kind of like, it's it's like you said, it's just kind of I guess hard to actually like realize and admit to yourself that. Well yeah, and the voice, sometimes. the eating disorder voice tells us we're not sick. Yeah, and exactly. It, like it's always, and we know that, we talk about it all the time, how it'll tell us that we, it always has a different goal that we can never achieve. And it, once we achieve that, it's the different goal. And it's that's the that's why eating disorders can be so difficult to reach out and get help for. Mm -hmm. The deeper I look into this, I see a narrative where it's more about views and less about actually helping people. They put you in the locked ward, then they take you into the hospital. Yeah. And like, it, it, I guess it's like a mental hospital. I don't know. Like, yeah, when, when we do get 5150, unfortunately, they don't take you to like a uh, eating disorder treatment center yeah. or any, they take you to a hospital, and in Los Angeles County, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of uh, psych wards. Um, that's something that I struggle with as a professional in the area is like, if a patient of mine is having a hard time, for them to have to go to a, to be 5150, um, which I've never had to do in my private practice, by the way, um, but I don't have a lot of options. And it can be really scary because it's in kind of like dodgy parts of town, and you sit um, if you take yourself to the hospital, you often sit with a lot of homeless people waiting in the waiting room and, um, and floridly psychotic people who are on the psych floor itself. Um, so it can feel really difficult if we just feel suicidal or if we've been 5150'd against our will. Um, now you got to remember this is coming from a licensed marriage and family therapist. Uh, somebody that's not had any professional experience with 5150s. And let's not forget that when Eugenia was forced to get help, um, after she got out, which was about two days later, she did go up to Connecticut where she talked to doctors that she trusted and was more comfortable with, and they said that she did in fact need help. Yeah. But then, like, actually, we just kind of ended up, like, flying right back to Connecticut. Okay, good. And I did end up meeting with a doctor and... Um, they agreed that I should like pretty much have to go into a program at that point. Yeah. And, um, luckily it was like at my own will. So I didn't yes, have to, you got to decide. Yeah. To I got see. to like decide if I was going to or not, which I think is a lot better than in my opinion, just being like, we well, can't force someone. Yeah, exactly. Um, From a 5150 that was forced onto her by YouTuber Jacqueline Glenn. But the most confusing and the most hypocritical part about this is that this whole process was taught to Jacqueline Glenn by, you guessed it, Katie Morton. Jacqueline Glenn tweets, Hey, Katie Morton, just saw your vid with Eugenia. Thanks again for walking me through what to do step by step. Without you, I wouldn't have known what a 5150 even was. Thanks for empathizing with me on the phone about how it's hard to lose a friend, but still the right thing to do. She posts receipts. Katie says, hi, Jacqueline. Thanks for reaching out. I'm happy to hop on a call with you tomorrow if that works for you. Unfortunately, we can't make anyone get help. Can't make anyone get help. But if she does have a therapist or a doctor, they can 5150 her. Happy to talk it out with you. I'm so sorry this is happening. I know it's really hard to watch and not do anything. What time tomorrow works for you best, Katie? 
And here she can be said, thanks for the update. Agree that the best next move is to get her out of the house and with you so that you can call Pet and get her to see a doctor. This is the uh, psychiatric evaluation team, but wow. That being said, this is not to cancel anyone. This is not to attack anyone. This is not to make anyone angry. This is social commentary to inform the public to make a positive change. And that being said, and as interesting as this is, there's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right, you guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and your interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes. And as always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. to me like you got like screwed over here like yeah, it kind of bamboozled a little bit yeah and